Hi there, welcome to this build of a 40 inch wingspan Clancy Aviation Speedy B. Now as you can see it's looking great and there's very little to be done on this now. We're almost ready to start giving it a finishing sand and think about covering it. But there's a couple of little jobs that we need to get done first. And all throughout this model I've been very aware that this lovely OSFS 26 four stroke engine at the front is going to be throwing oil all the way across the model and we've got an open cockpit we're going to have a pilot in it hopefully and it will just get really messy and I would like to try and limit that and reduce it while still making it look like a sort of a cool retro uh, design and so what I'm thinking of doing is making a custom pipe that will travel from the existing muffler onto the wing, along the wing and down exiting under the tailplane to get rid of those uh, oil fuel residue gases. Now we need to be very careful in doing this because I don't, last thing I want to do is add back pressure and make the engine so it doesn't run properly. I mean my experience of adding custom pipes like this is that actually they work fine as long as you don't restrict them too much. And what I've got is a, a metre length of aluminium tubing and this is very very light. It's got a, a wall thickness of 0.45 millimetres and it's got an 8 millimetre outside diameter so the inside diameter is going to be over just over 7 mil. Now the outlet on this existing muffler is 3.5 mil. So going from that 3.5 mil into this 7 mil tube, I'm hoping is not really going to create an issue. If it does, that's fine. We tried. If it doesn't work, we'll take it off and we'll just clean the bottle after we've flown it. But it's worth giving it a try. What I'm going to do is I'm going to need to custom bend this. It's nice and nice and straight at the moment but I've got myself a pipe bender and I'm going to bend this to fit and I'll move the camera now and we'll have a look and I'll show you the solution that I've come up with and how I'm going to bend the pipe and how we're going to fix it to the aeroplane. Right, well, I'll quickly talk you through what I'm hoping to do. First off we've got to connect the existing muffler to our aluminium pipe. And the way I'm planning to do that is to make up uh, an aluminium kind of an adapter that will fit on the end of the exhaust here that will just allen key onto that uh, end piece there. And it will be terminate in an 8mm bit of piping. I can then plug on this uh, plastic or silicon rubber, is it? Um, exhaust deflector onto that I'll cut off this angle and the other end will go onto my 8mm aluminium tubing and that will give me a flexible joint here so that the vibration from the engine isn't transferred onto, into this, uh, this pipe. Now at the moment the line of that exhaust is running out across the ring at a bit of an angle so the first thing I'll do is put a little bit of a bend in and bring that around close to the uh, close to the fuselage and then I'll bend it down to follow the line of the wing which will then come in to the fuselage side here and dive under the tailplane. So there's quite a bit of bending of this thin tube and I've got myself uh, a relatively cheap pipe bender and uh, this does 6mm, 8mm and 10mm. So we'll bend that up and once we've got it bent we will put some uh, little bits of hardwood here where we can just screw through to mount this onto the wing and we'll have a look at that in a bit. But first of all I need to think about this adapter to connect from the exhaust to this, uh, this silicon pipe. OK well let's have a look at the solution we've got here. I've got my pipe, 8mm outside diameter, I've got my silicon tube which I've cut the, uh, the corner off and now that will push over there. I now need an adapter that will slide into there 
and I can allen key onto the exhaust. If I can get something turned up like this, whereby the silicon will fit over the outside of this turned down piece here, and this will slot into there and then allen key on, so I could have uh, a couple of um, um, grub screws here just to hold that in place and then as soon as the exhaust gases come out they expand into this bigger area. Only problem is I don't have the means to turn that but I know somebody that does. Well I'm now with my good friend Mark who's not only a RC pilot but he's also a machinist and he's kindly offered to make me an adapter. You all need great friends like that. And here he is, go on, say something Mark. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now it's really good he's doing this for me, it's a big help. Well, I've now got my adapter and I am really pleased. Mark's done a great job. Yes, another Mark. And that just fits lovely over the silicon pipe and then that will slide onto the, uh, the 8 mil aluminium pipe and that will give that lovely flexible joint that we need. So, all that's left now is for me to drill and tap the adapter and put in a couple of grub screws just to hold the exhaust in place like that and I'm probably going to put in 3 mil grub screws I mean that should be plenty doesn't need to be any bigger than that so I'll get on and do it and then we can start bending this pipe and that's going to be interesting right well, I've now got the adapter drilled tapped and a couple of grub screws in there and that holds on really nicely it feels really secure now I'm ready to start bending the pipe but I've just been messing around making some little uh, sort of brackets if you like to hold the pipe and I'll just zoom in and I'll show you these and I'll also show you the pipe bender I'm going to use and then we'll start bending the pipe and seeing how that goes. Okay well to mount it I've got this piece of 8mm hardwood dowel with a semicircle filed in the top that the pipe will just sit in nice and securely and I drilled through that and then counterboard it at the top, for the, the top half so that I can use this uh, servo screw. This is one of the ones with the hex heads and the integral washer but I've filed the washer off to make the head smaller. Now this will screw through there and into the wing and the head will be far enough down that I can drill or I have drilled a hole through to put a piece of music wire through. So once that's screwed into place on the wing, I can push a piece of music wire through like that. I can put the exhaust on top and then I can use an elastic band, I'm not sure if this elastic band's any good, to just fix that in place like that. And that should hold it nice and firm in position. I could always use a cable tie, but I'm thinking if I want to put the exhaust on and off quickly then an elastic band is a good solution. I might shorten this a little bit so that it's not quite so high above the wing but we'll see how that is once we've bent, bent the pipe. Well here's the, the pipe bender that I'm going to be using and I've used this type of pipe bender before and found they're pretty good but you have to stop the pipe from sliding through or at least with a smaller one as you bend it. We'll see how that goes and here's the box if you want the, the details of it. Right well let's see how this pipe bender works. I think I'm going to start at this end and work on this first bend just to bring the pipe round into alignment against the fuselage so just to bring it round and I'm going to mark on where I think the bend should start and it only wants to be a fairly light bend at this point don't want to go overboard 
So let's see how this goes. This will be fun. Hopefully it works. As I said, just wants to be a really small bend. Well, let's put a decent enough bend in it without kinking it. And that is oh, just just a little uh, just trying to lighten this up. I think that's okay actually. Or maybe just just a fraction more just to bring it round. Doesn't want much. Need to make sure I get this in the same plane now. Okay, just a tad more. Okay, there we go. Now, let's see where we are with that. Yes, perfect. That is now bringing this along the top of the wing and in line with the, uh, the, the fuselage. So, what I need to do now is work out where I need to put a little bit of a downward bend to bring this down to follow the line of that wing. So I'm going to get on and carry on bending this. This pipe bender seems to work pretty good so far, but they're all gentle bends. There's no, uh, there's a very slight kink on the underside. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's nothing of any consequence at all. So I'm going to get on and see if we can get this bent up and, uh, and fitted. There we go, we've got this fixed into shape, into place now, and all bent into shape, and I think that should work really nicely. All I need to do now is make these little supports, I've got one there, and I'll probably put one at the tail end of the wing here. Now if we have a look at the side, we can see how it bends down under the, uh, under the tail plane, and hopefully, okay, you might get a little bit of uh, residue on the tip of the tail, but hopefully we'll get rid of a, a, a lot of that. Right, I've now got the pipe nicely secured. I've got these three stays, and you can see on these two here, the front two, I've got pieces of um, spruce that's just been cut and set in on, on the shear webbing at the front and up the, on the back just against the, the rib and between the, uh, the cap strips. And they provide a really strong attachment and at the end of the day they don't need to be hugely strong. At the back here I set in a piece of dowel actually into the, the bolster and then I've screwed into that. All three of these are removable and when it comes down to fitting after I've done the covering, because I'll take them off now, when I do the covering, or, or when I've done the covering, I'll paint these black and then fuel proof them and then screw them in place just so they look a little bit neater. And of course, I'll get some, I'll, I'll try and get some black uh, elastic bands, something that just looks a little bit better than these ones. Well, it's great to get that all bent up and secured in place. And at the end of the day, as I said earlier, if it causes a problem with back pressure and the engine not running right, then it's really easy to remove. I mean, my experience of this type of thing suggests that it will be okay, but we'll see. Now, in a similar vein of trying to keep the oil off the model, I've been thinking about the breather nipple on the back of the engine. Four strokes, they have a crankcase breather. This one on this uh, four stroke OSFS26 is right on the back of the crankcase set in. And we need to run a pipe from that to get rid of excess oil. Now one of the problems with this is that I don't want an unsightly pipe running down the side of the fuselage. I don't want it just left short so it sprays oil all over the, uh, the model. But I've come up with a solution of how we can keep this clean. The two easiest solutions would be to just leave it and let the oil spill out the back here and in which case it will run down the model. The other would be to put in a piece of tubing, attach it to the nipple, and to bring it down somewhere like this, either to leave it short or to run it down to the axle. Now, I don't like either of those ideas. It's simplest, but I don't like them. So what I'm gonna do is I've got this eight mil aluminium tubing, 
and I'm going to use that to make an internal pipe that comes from the top here and out the bottom which I can thread the pipe down when I put on these put on these wings when I come to fly and the breather will stick out the bottom. Now the breather pipe will be approximately 150 mil long, something like that. Now I've heard people say that it shouldn't be too long, I've heard people say it doesn't matter, at the end of the day we'll try it and if it works it works, if it doesn't it doesn't. Right, I've now got that tube fitted in the in the nose of the, the fuselage and you can see it going in there, it's nice and flush and it's coming out nice and flush just before the uh, the box for the landing gear. Now I still haven't glued that in place, you can see there it going down inside. I still haven't epoxied it in place but I'm just going to put a little bit of masking tape around the pipe to grip and then I, the epoxy will stick not only to the balsa but to the masking tape and that will just hold it nice and secure. Now if we see how this works in practice we will get the model, we'll lock the wings in at the back, we get the pipe and we will run that down the tube like such and then we will just fit that like that and so there you are you can't see anything at the front or the top of the model but you have this little bit of a tube coming out below for the uh, for the breather now I could even I could leave that longer I could thread it down or I could cut it shorter but I'll probably leave it like that maybe a little bit shorter the other option with this and I think some of the scale guys do this is to put in a, a tank here that the breather goes in and you collect the oil inside the actual model itself which is obviously a lot cleaner but I don't really want to be adding weight to the nose that aluminium tube has no weight or very little weight a little bit of epoxy but I don't want to start building platforms and putting tanks in there okay I could do it fairly lightly but it would still add a little bit more weight and I don't really think it's uh, I don't think it's necessary. Well I'm feeling really positive about the work we've done today getting this pipe done and the breather hopefully it will keep the model a lot cleaner at the end of the day if it doesn't it's no big deal we'll clean it and if there's any problems with the back pressure and the breather being too long it's no big deal we can just remove them and uh, we haven't lost a lot. I mean at the end of the day as modelers it's great to experiment and try things see how they work and that's kind of how we learn and grow as, uh, as modelers. So anyway I hope you found this video interesting and useful I'm going to draw it to a close now and in the next video which I think is probably the last before we start covering I'm going to be setting up the front suspension. We'd already done the groundwork installing the box and, and getting the axle ready and the uh, shock absorbers so we, we've got the weight in the model now so we can set that suspension set that suspension up so anyway thanks very much for watching and please come back and see how we get on in building this 40 inch wingspan speedy bee